Welcome to How It Works, a video series from Law Sites in which you get to see hands-on demonstrations of legal tech products directly from the developer. Today's featured product is Law Clerk, and to tell us about it, I'm joined by Law Clerk co-founder Kristen Tyler. Kristen, welcome. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for having me. And I know we've done this a few times, but I'm glad to show the world our our Bob's eye view of how Law Clerk works. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so tell us generally about Law Clerk. Sure. So we launched in January of 2018. And for those of you who have not found us yet, we are, in a nutshell, um, a great resource for busy attorneys, mostly solos and smaller firms, although we have some larger firms that we work with as well. But the whole idea is to bring the gig economy to legal, to build a powerful network of freelance lawyers that busy attorneys can turn to when they need help, whether that's a couple times a day, a couple times a week, a couple times a month, a couple times a year. And so uh, we've built this platform, lawclerk.legal, where attorneys can log in and post work either on a project basis or a subscription basis. And I'm sure we'll talk about both of those today. We can talk about both of them. I know the subscription basis is something you just launched and uh, you're really excited about it. So why don't you just kind of tell us a little bit about how that works? Absolutely. So. You know, over the years, as Law Clerk has grown and we've developed some users that have very deeply uh, intertwined us with their business models, the thing that we heard more and more from them was, I need a deeper way to work with my top people. A number of our, our power users have favorite freelancers that we, they work with time and time again, and they wanted to take that to the next level. So in January of this year, 2021, we launched a new subscription offer. The way it works, it's still a very flexible way for busy attorneys, solos and small firms to get help. They can get help in increments of 10 hours a month. Uh, it's actually a four week period. So 10 hours uh, increments starting at 20 hours. So anywhere from 20 to 160 hours per four week period of help. And the really cool thing is that attorneys have, a number of them have really tailored this. So let's say you have an attorney who maybe has a real estate practice. And a por portion of that is transactional, a portion of that is litigation based. Instead of hiring one associate who maybe can do one of those things pretty well and the other not so well, they can now get a virtual associate for say 40 hours a month to help with the transactional work to draft documents. And they could get a real estate litigation associate for maybe you know 80 or 100 hours a month to help with the litigation work. So they can really fine tune the expertise that they need and the amount that they need. And, um, and that way it's pretty cool. We've got three different price points. I'll show that later on. And another big factor is that with subscription, we take the heavy lifting out of hiring. For any anyone out there watching who's ever been through the hiring process, it's really time consuming and cumbersome to you know come up with your job description, get it posted, wade through resumes, find some that look like good candidates, set up interviews. You know all of that takes days and a lot of time. Uh, with this new option, you give us some very baseline information. We go out and do that grunt work for you and present the top candidates to you, who you can then decide to interview if you would like to before moving forward. And so I know that this is all driven by a platform. Show us show us how it works. I'd love to. So, so again, you can find us at lawclerk.legal, not lawclerk.com, lawclerk.legal. And um, as you can imagine, we've got a ton of information on the homepage. So definitely invite you to check that out. I always like to highlight, if you come over here to, uh, oh, sorry, to this attorney resources tab, it's in the very top dark navy blue bar. Uh, if you click there and you go over, we are gonna have a lot of, guess what, attorney resources. Um, we've got our ultimate guide to outsourcing, delegation worksheets, a ton of great stuff there. But the thing I love the most here is that we've provided sample projects by area of law. So if you're a bankruptcy lawyer, you could come in here and download this handout to see really in-depth examples of how attorneys are working with law clerk and outsourcing in their bankruptcy uh, practice. We've got criminal, you know, family law franchise, we've got everything. So whatever practice area or areas you have in your firm, you can get some really detailed information to give you ideas of how to work. Are there any practice areas that this is not right for, or does it pretty much span the gamut? It really spans the gamut. Um, you know, for, of course, the, the bulk of the work we see on repeat is um, family law, bankruptcy, business litigation, immigration, estate planning. Those are the, the big heavy repeats and real estate, of course. Um, but, you know, lately we've seen more and more really sophisticated 
MA work, cybersecurity type issues. So we see everything, and especially I think a lot of uh, attorneys who maybe are leaving big law to open up their own boutique firms, they still want that level of help. And we have uh, a pretty deep bench of former big law attorneys who are now full time freelancers because they wanted a better quality of life. So we see the whole gamut. Okay, so back on the homepage, a uh, couple of real easy, quick points. So um, I think it's really important to note that we have no sign-up fees and there's no monthly fee. So just to be a part of the Law Clerk Network and have it available to you when you do need help, costs nothing. So I would definitely encourage anyone out there, you know, go ahead and sign up. It's easy, it's free, it takes about five minutes. Um, and I always like to give people a little heads up that the last step of registering is for the attorney side, we need you to provide a selfie of you with your driver's license. So if you can see me over here, like pretend this is my driver's license, you'd hold it by your face, snap a selfie, and then you either upload it or text it to us. The reason for that is just, that's the way that we safeguard the site to make sure that only attorneys are on the site. Now, we mentioned the so or subscription program. Let me show you that. So up here again, the Navy Bar, if you click on virtual subscription program, we've got a bunch of information and if this is something you want to dig into to see if it's right for you, book a demo, talk to our team. Uh, we can help you figure out what might work best for your firm. And, uh, you know, how we're happy to provide that service. But we have a bunch of different information about how it works. Uh, the pricing levels here, you can see you can select a freelance lawyer at either a junior level, experienced or senior level attorney. The hourly rate for however many hours you tell us you need is anywhere from 75 to 140 an hour. So it's a very... Uh, flexible, affordable way to get help. Um, I recently, just last week, actually, Bob was talking to one of our attorneys who's a family law attorney in the South. He uh, signed up for a virtual associate in a subscription for, um, at the time we were offering 10 hour increments. We now have made the minimum 20, but he told me that in his first month working with that associate for the 10 hours, just getting 10 extra hours of help, he saw additional revenue in his firm of $6,000. Now he attributed that to, of course, he was billing the virtual associates time to the client at a reasonable market rate as attorneys are allowed to do. But he also found that by delegating some of that, um, you know, lower level work that's just time consuming to the virtual associate, he can do other deeper work and generate more revenue as well. So the combination of being able to bill out someone else's time and you know, basically doubling your capacity during that same time period to bill it out for that one attorney in one month was $6,000 additional revenue, which if you take that out over the course of a year, um, it's going to be a really significant number for a solo attorney. And this attorney was actually already uh, talking to us because he wanted to increase from 10 hours to at least 20 or 30. So, you know, just one very early success story. And we were thrilled to hear that. That's fantastic. And, and for the subscription service, you're providing the range of hourly rates on the freelance service. The uh, lawyer that's posting the opportunity sets the price they're going to pay. Is that right? Well, that's on the project based side. Yeah, on the so project based side. The, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So just to distinguish project based side, uh, you're not setting the price, the attorney is setting the price. Exactly, yeah. exactly. On the project by project side, it is a flat fee per project set by the attorney. Subscription, because it's a chunk of hours, it's just all hourly, which as you can probably understand is easier for a lot of our attorney friends to understand because they work on the hourly, you know, the billable hour. It just right. makes more sense. And for some attorneys, it works better into their overall business model. So, right. Well, let's go in. So let's say that you've made an account with us and you've logged in. So I'm going to go in now. We've got a demo site. And We've talked a little bit about projects, okay? So a project, think of a project as a piece of written work. This could be a letter, a research memo, uh, any sort of discovery, any sort of motion or agreement, um, any sort of written document is really what this is keyed for. And so let's say you have, you know, maybe you have a motion for summary judgment on a case that you need to write and you've been having a hard time finding the hours in your day or your week to write it. You know, anything that you're, you don't have enough time to do yourself or you don't want to do yourself is a great candidate to outsource on Law Clerk. Um, and I know you've seen this before, Bob, but posting a project is really easy. It's it's really four steps. You're going to go through, you're going to give us a project name. You know, maybe you have that motion for summary judgment. You'll tell us how long you want to take applications. You'll set the deadlines. Um, we do, I know you have a lot of um, followers, Bob, who also use Clio. If you are a Clio user, we have an integration with Clio that 
will, if you set a deadline on a project, it will automatically sync those deadlines to your Clio calendar. So that's pretty cool. We've got a bunch of YouTube videos if you want to know more about that. So here's the part you asked about, Bob, setting the project price. So again, project-based work is flat fee, you name your price. So maybe you think this is um, an eight to 10 hour motion and you are willing to pay $100 an hour to get freelance help. You know, I would always say go on the higher estimate range. So 10 hours at $100 an hour, you maybe you want to post that motion for a thousand bucks. That's a very reasonable price to me. Um, you would come down and check the area of law. So this is one of the ways that we narrow the funnel. So we just talked about we have this big uh, network of freelance lawyers and we want to narrow the funnel in for you to help you find the right person. So maybe this is a uh, contract issue involving a bank and also an employment issue. Whatever the areas of law involved in the work, you want to tag those. You can tag as many as you want, and that's going to help us narrow down and find the best freelancer for you. Um, you would set the type of work. This would be a pleading skill level. I always say just put it as a four. <laughs> and then you can post the project either to the general marketplace, if this is your first time using the service, or maybe you've done, used Law Clerk a few times and you've found some people you like. You could favorite them, add them to what we call a team, and then in the future, go right back to them to send a piece of work to them. And you know, if for some reason they can't do it, you can reassign it to another team member or the marketplace. But this is uh, how that looks. So if I work with somebody and I really like the work they've done, and I want to work, I want to, I can, I can like them. I can, I can add them to my team, and then the next time I have a project, I can favor them. Exactly. So you just cut out the phase of having to review other applicants. You go right to that person who you know you've worked with, you like, and does good work. Um, so this screen too is where you're going to write a few sentences about the scope of work to give them a sense of what's involved um, and tag the applicable area of law. And again, you'll see those Clio settings if you have that. And we give you some prompts there on how to do it. Step three is agreeing to the terms of service. And step four is inputting your conflict information. So boom, 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 you've got that project posted. So that's pretty easy. Um, so again, back on the project side, and then I'll switch and show you subscription. Here we go. There's a posted project. So this means this project is accepting applicants and we need to go in and review them and, and see who's going to be best. So um, this is kind of what this looks like. Project applicants. And you can scroll down. You can see we've got a bunch of applicants. You can sort them over here by their location, if that matters, for whatever reason, the rating, their projects completed. Um, you'll notice here on this profile for Tasha, she included a note. She said, I've drafted innumerable requests for documents and I'm skilled at honing them to make sure they are sharp and effective. So that's a kind of a nice feature too that the freelancer can use to highlight why they really are uniquely qualified for that specific project. Of course, you can click in here more directly to review the details of her profile. So when you go into each individual applicant's profile to review them, you can see that if you click here, you're gonna get her resume, that'll pop up, boom. You can get a writing sample, you know, that's gonna be really important if you wanna make sure someone is a persuasive and concise writer. But to me, one of the most important pieces of data is if you scroll down, you can look at her project reviews and ratings. So we see for this freelancer, she's completed 14 projects. The vast majority of them, she's gotten an exceeded expectations rating. So our rating sale is exceeded, met, or did not meet. Um, this did not meet, we are glad to report, happens on less than 1% of projects. And we do offer a satisfaction guarantee. If something goes wrong, for whatever reason, your expectations are not met, uh, we want to make it right for you. So just know that we do have your back in that regard. But I can tell you now, uh, you know, three and a half years into this business, we now have, and I don't even know how many freelancers that have 200 plus completed projects. I think we have a few that are around 300. So um, some of these people are really dedicated freelancers. They know how to do good work in this remote freelance capacity, and uh, they're just really great. So if you'd like Tasha, you would assign her to that project. We'll go back and I'll show you what it looks like once you're matched. So once you hit assign that button, that is when you, uh, your credit card is charged for that flat fee price. That's the first time you're going to be charged a fee. So if you don't find a great applicant, you can just cancel the project out. No problem. Um, but once you're in process working with someone, we're going to charge your card, hold the money in an escrow account until you come back and tell us the work is done and that you're happy with it. And that's when the freelancer gets paid. But once you're matched with your person, you can see we have several options for communication. Communication is so important with any type of freelance work. You can use our chat portal over here. You can upload documents through the site. 
If your freelancer is logged on, you can start a direct meeting with them by audio and or video. And then uh, if you click on their photo, you'll get their direct email and phone number. So you can really reach out any way you want, which is a great feature to know. Um, so that kind of wraps it up on the project side, and I know you've known that, but then let's say you're interested in subscription. You're like, you know, I'm really interested in this. One of the best ways to start that process to express interest is you're gonna go click subscription, add a subscription. This is really just an interest form. You're gonna give us your name, your contact information, where you're barred, general idea of what type of experience you need and how many hours, um, you know, you want 50 hours of help per four week. And then a member of our team is gonna reach out to you to uh, get a little bit of additional information and then we go vet the applicants to present to you. Um, I have to tell you, Bob, we had a really cool, I'm gonna stop the share for a minute, a really cool subscription posted yesterday for a very high profile um, personal injury class action lawsuit in California. We had already, provided the firm with one virtual associate for 120 hours a month. They contacted us yesterday, said we need another one today. Um, so we posted the, the project last, or we posted the new subscription last night. Uh, within less than 10 hours, we had 12 applicants. We reviewed them, determined that eight of them were just like total rock stars. I mean, I we've already created the executive summary packet, sent it off to the attorney, and they're reviewing it right now. They will most likely be doing interviews this afternoon to start with a new associate on Monday. Yeah, that's fantastic. What about from the freelancer side of it? Who qualifies? How, do, how does somebody qualify to be a freelancer on Law Clerk? And what should they expect in terms of opportunities that will come to them? Sure. So I have been telling every freelancer I could talk to that there really has never been a better time to be a freelance lawyer. The opportunities are just growing by leaps and bounds. Um, they So to be a part of Law Clerk, they either need to be a graduate of an ABA accredited law school or a barred attorney in good standing. So we vet all of that through the process. They When they create their profile, and again, no fee to sign up for a freelancer, no monthly fee. Um, they will also be required to upload their resume, writing sample, and uh, proof of law school graduation. So um, that's some of the due diligence that we provide to give them. Now, we're seeing more and more attorneys quit their so-called day job just to be full-time freelancers, and they're seeing a lot of success with that. It's a really great lifestyle option for a lot of people who um, want more than to be, you know, chained to a desk in an office all day, every day. So we're seeing a huge growth in the number of freelance lawyers and uh, again, the timing couldn't be better because we're seeing a huge uptick in demand as well. Do attorneys either on the, on the on the hiring side or on the freelance side need to at all be concerned about ethics issues here? Oh, yeah. No, we get a lot of ethics questions. I uh, just, again, this week was teaching uh, the ethics of outsourcing as a CLE for a bar association. But the big ones there to maintain are that you are being mindful of UPL, unauthorized practice of law. And the way you do that, in a nutshell, is that you want to make sure you are limiting the freelancer's role to only doing written work in the background under your supervision. So again, that's things that we've talked about, drafting documents, helping with discovery. Um, and by doing that, they are not actually engaging in the practice of law because they are not giving legal advice to clients. They're not going to court for you or taking depositions. You're handling all of those things while they do the time-consuming written work. And so that means that, uh, number one, it opens the door so that potentially if you are a freelance lawyer in Tennessee, you could hire um, or you could be hired by someone in Texas or Florida or California who needs that type of expertise because you're not actually engaging in the practice of law. Now, if you do need a parent's counsel, co-counsel, like that's a different type of relationship. And we have attorneys that come to us and we say, look, we can't really help you. This is what you need. This is what you should do. But so UPL is a big one. And then number two is supervision. You know, I think attorneys we are professional problem solvers. We are trying to get a lot of work done for our clients. And we kind of wish there was like a magic button to be like, delegate it and it's done. I want to forget about it. But you can't do that. You have to remain tuned in to what the freelancer is doing, supervise their work, review and edit documents before they go out the door. And if you do that, you're going to stay out of trouble. But we have a really in-depth uh, white paper on all of the ethics rules. We go through the ABA models rules as well as each state's ethics rules. So if you're interested in that topic, go find the white paper on our website or reach out. We'd be happy to send a copy to you. All right. One other question I had, if I'm a hiring attorney on a project, I, I posted a, a, a flat fee project. Do I have any way of knowing how many hours the freelancer actually spends on the project after it's done? Absolutely. Let me show you that real quick. Um, I'm glad you asked about that. 
So let's say that you um, either on the project side or on the subscription side, when you're working on a subscription, the freelancers are still required to input their time. The reason for that is twofold. If you're doing project work, uh, you know, you want to bill that out to the client at a reasonable market rate, but you also want to know if you paid a fair, fair fee for that work uh, so you can change it in the future if needed. Um, and then on the subscription side, obviously like on this subscription, it's a 50 hour subscription. You can see she's used 44.9. It ends in a few days. So she's got a little more work to do, but that helps you manage the work that you're delegating to your subscription virtual associate. And the way we manage that, so this is a subscription with Lisa. You can see you cre can create different matters for different pieces of work, different clients. Um, and then when you go in there, you know, you're going to be giving her, actually, I don't want to do that. Let's say, you know, this is an LLC, in Ray Sharky LLC. You know, we love our sharks. Um, you can, you know, give her written instructions here, upload documents. And this is a way for her to bifurcate and keep track of her time on each project you're giving her within that subscription over the course of the month um, so that you can bill the client directly, but then you can see the time records. And of course, this gets sent to the hiring attorney every uh, once a week, they get a report. So that helps them again, know how much work the freelancer has completed and uh, be able to better delegate to them and make sure they're taking full advantage of those 50 hours or however many hours they have. All right. Anything else you want to show us today? Um, you know, I think that's it in a real quick nutshell. So I think the last thing I'd like to mention is obviously we went through a pretty quick demo today. We are happy to do this one-on-one -on -one for any attorney who wants to know more. But I also want attorneys to know if you are interested in a law clerk, sign up. It, there's no fee to sign up, no monthly fee. When you sign up, we will automatically match you with what we call a dedicated law clerk advisor. Uh, it's a complimentary service and the advisor is kind of like your concierge. They're there to help uh, guide you through the process of delegation. If this is new to you, uh, they're going to help you, you know, make sure you're posting projects for the right fee, or they can help you figure out how many hours you might need of help on a subscription. They can help you, you know, if you're debating through a, through a couple of different candidates, they can help talk it through to figure out who might be best for you. But each of our advisors works with a couple of hundred attorneys nationwide. They know the best practices that other attorneys are using to see a lot of success with outsourcing on Law Clerk. And they can help coach you and teach you some of those uh, best practices as well to make outsourcing a success for you. So definitely take advantage of our advisors. They are amazing and it's a complimentary service. So you might as well uh, get that help to take your outsourcing to the next level. Well, thanks so much, Kristen, for showing us Law Clerk today. And uh, as you've shown, uh, anybody watching this can get a lot more information at lawclerk.legal. Lots of information available there. Uh, that's it for this episode of How It Works. You can find the full series of episodes at lawsitesblog.com. Thanks so much to Kristen for joining us today. This is Bob Ambrogi. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>